Welcome to Raising the Bar podcast. Sponsored by the Ashmore Law Firm. We're your hosts and siblings, Gary Ashmore and Lori Ashmore Peters. Subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right. Hi there. I want to welcome Tony Casillas to our Raising the Bar podcast, two times Super Bowl winner. Yes. 12 years in the NFL. Yes. Lombardi award, tro- award winner. Uh, God, you've college football Hall of Famer. And you've you know, done I, it all. Yeah. It's just a, it's a, it's a great resume. I, and, and as you look back, as you get older, you kind of reflect on it. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, uh, that's kind of the measurable. That's the uh, the the Google introduction. <laughs> you got to love Google, right, <laughs> Uncle Google? Uh, I mean, life after football. What what is it? You know, you've got you know kids, incredible husband. Oh, thank you. I mean, you know, if tell can, my wife can your wife call in, <laughs> we'll have her call in and rate rate your weekend. Um, I mean, father, you've you've just done so much after football. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, I think being married for 27 years and being together with someone for 30 years, I think you're battle tested. Uh, certainly, there's there's times in a relationship you're like it go both ways, but uh, we weather the storm. Uh, tremendous woman, uh, you know. I think it just you know when you look at your career, especially in sports, it kind of shapes you for different things that you're going to take on. Uh, sudden change, we use that a lot and in the game of uh, the sport of football or any sport or in life in general. So, uh, and as you have family and it just kind of changes everything, a different perspective, you get older, there's different, you know, to go back to the, you know, to the analogy of sports, there's four quarters of your life. And, you know, certainly, uh, you know, I'm getting to that, that point where I appreciate family and being together with someone. But, uh, well, I tell you, it, it goes by really fast. It seems like, I mean, it's a blink of an eye. You know, especially when you have kids, people always tell you when they're babies, you know, before you know it, you're going to blink and they're grown and you're like, that's never going to happen. Yeah. But now, hell, your kids are older now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my, my son just turned turned 30. And, uh, you know, I think the thing about it with, with family is like, uh, I think a great measurable is how much your kids like to be around you. Because I think as you get older, you know, they want to do their own thing. But, you know, we try to just still be around each other and... and we can stand each other, uh, but it really just kind of gives you a different overall perspective, and and really uh, it kind of puts everything uh, what you want to do, and and, uh, and and enjoy vacations or whatever it is. And so I, I think it's a it's it's a it's a great uh, point in my life, certainly. No, and it definitely is. You know, with with Gary and I, whenever we introduce ourselves to people, it's like not husband and wife, brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> right. Make that clear right up so, front. Right. And and you're right. I mean, Dad always instilled in us, you know, God first, family second, community, you know, third. Um, and we all, you know, people ask, what is it like working with family? And we tell them, you know, I mean, it's great. You know, we like each other enough that we can work together every day. You know, we have our family dinners every Sunday. You know, but he and I can, we yell and scream at each other and we holler and, you know, some expletives may be used. But then come <laughs> noon, it's like, I'm starving. He's like, I'm starving too. Where do you want to go to lunch? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, with your family, none of your, your kids followed in your footsteps? No, I, I think that, uh, as you guys can attest in your field, is it a, it, I think there's always aspirations to maybe do what your parents did. Uh, but sometimes it's not pave the, the the right way you know sports to me you have to be lucky I think that you have to have a passion uh it's a very unglorious uh there's times where it's not very glorious uh and there's a lot of work and I always told my kids it's like you know if you want to play sports the thing if you don't like it uh, the one thing you're not going to do is you're not going to quit and I think they kind of see what I did in my career at and they see my body. It's, it's it, you know, it, it's a little battered over time. But, um, you know, they were young. You know, we had kids later on in life because, uh, you know, you got to be mature. And you know, kids are they, they're they're expensive. And they are. So, uh, and quite frankly, I was probably too immature and maybe self-absorbed to to think about that, which I think is a good thing. I think you have to, you know, realize that. But, uh, you know, I I think that. Uh, 
you know, for me, that's, uh, you know, something you, you, you give advice, you know, to, 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 to young people about having kids. I'm like, Hey, wait till you're ready. Uh, wait till you're at a point in your life because it's going to change your life. We know that. Oh yeah. And I think it's great you guys work together because, you know, you're siblings and we all understand that, you know, there's times and places that, you know, I have five sisters and I tell you what, I think the, yeah. the thing that really got me is that, uh, they were all PMSing at the same time. Uh, uh, that, that's what happens. I don't know if I can say it, that. It lines but up. They were you going, can. They were going through hormones. And, yes, And I always wondered, like, why are they just beating the hell out of me? And, and now I understood as I got older that they couldn't control that. But I think it's great to be able to work together family because, as you guys have said, uh, you know, I've been in, in, in business relationships and advice I give is not do business with family. So... That's great that you guys had that cohesiveness and be able to do what you guys do. Yeah, no, and it is. We we do. We have fun. You know, we like as we were talking about before. Life is too short. If you don't enjoy waking up every day and doing what you do, find something else. Yeah, even if you just have to fake it, right? You know, sometimes you wake up and it's it's. Uh, I'm not the best person to be around, I, and I, I I try to just kind of go back. And you know, my wife does a good job of putting me in put me in my place, and my kids, quite frankly, have a you know, everyone has a great way of putting me in my place. I'm like, you know, why did I do that? I mean, it's just, it's not that big a deal. I mean, once you start thinking about it, it's like, you know, why did I do that? And so it's a, it's kind of humbling. Right. It really is. So kids, some, I'm, well, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, kids definitely humble you because they really don't care what you, what you did or how well known you are. <laughs> so something I'm curious about, you said you had five sisters, so no wonder you probably went into football. But, but <laughs> since grade school, I mean, kindergarten, did you, I mean, tell me, tell me your journey from the football perspective. Did you have any brothers? Yeah, I had a, I had a younger brother and he really, I was the athlete of the family. Yeah. Uh, you know, I come from Oklahoma, you know, my dad, uh, my grandparents, they migrated from what else to Chihuahua. Yeah. Uh, and so they came to Oklahoma and then my dad, you know, he was a hardworking guy, uh, you know, a big family. Um, but I, I think that I just really, to be quite honest, you know, that was a way for me to, to be active. I mean, back in our gen, my generation, I mean, that's what you did. You went outside, you played, you, you know, you tried to find something to keep you out of trouble. I mean, not that we got in trouble, but it just, you know, it was activity to keep you, you know, compete and everything. And, and I, I, you know, I just got lucky. I mean, I was blessed with the work ethic. I think that's the, that's the thing that you really have to have is work ethic. And some people don't have it and some people do. And no knock against them, but sports, that's what you have, you know, the work ethic. And so as I went in, you know, my, you know, as my life progressed, I mean, I love playing baseball. That was really my sport. Baseball, playing baseball. And so... As I went into my high school years, um, I really became a gym rat. I loved working out. So I got to a point where I had to tell my, you know, tell my baseball coach, said, look, hey, I'm done playing baseball. You know, it's going to my junior years, and uh, I'm going to commit to football. So I'll never forget this. First thing he tells me, he said, hey, Tony, you know what? If you ever, you know, have the, the goals of going on playing the next level, baseball is your route and I said I said well you know I said you're never you're never going to make it in in football and I'm like okay well I guess we'll just see well uh fast forward you know through the Super Bowl years the first Super Bowl we went to in 1992 guess who the first person was to call me <laughs> it was my baseball coach so uh that kind of shaped me and and again I just uh I enjoyed working out and uh and and just the whole process the journey I think for me, I think for anyone that does anything, it's it's the journey because the journey's not easy. There's difficult times, a lot of adversity, and you just gotta pick up where you're at and you know crying and and, and hurting and just carry on and and, and hopefully uh, that path will work out for you. And you know, for those of us that just you know watch it from the sidelines and and every Sunday and Monday, it, it's we I don't think people don't understand the journey you had to go through and the sacrifice and the hard work. And we don't get that. Yeah, and we don't get that side. The, I mean, discipline, the discipline of it, like absolutely. You say, to work out. It's not. It's not easy. I mean, it takes a lot. It really is. And and, and look, I think that you know, when I when you when you talk to people and you, you kind of put your perspective with their perspective in life, and 
you know, at sports. It's it's the same journey. I mean, it's a. I think the physical the physical turmoil that you go through because it is, it's vigorous. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, there's times you just you want to quit, uh, and I think that that's kind of what shapes you into this person to not only be physically strong but mentally. I think mentally is is the thing that you have to really try to to accomplish and get a hold of. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people can't. I mean, you you need definitely that mental strength. Um, so who would you consider your mentor to be as you were growing up? You know what? I think that's kind of a two part question because I, you know, I had a great, you know, family. My, my mother, uh, she's retired. She's 83 years old and works 35 years in Tulsa public schools, uh, as a special needs assistant. And she's retired in October and she just loves to work. But when I was in high school, uh, you know, my family didn't have a lot of money. I, I, I showed up, uh, you know, for my high school, uh, you know, senior pitcher, and I didn't have a, a coat and tie. But my, my mentor, uh, she was a, a, a high school counselor, Pat Holder, and she made sure that I was able to go through the process of getting you know, recruiting and everything, because I didn't. Here I am, you know, all of a sudden, I'm this, this blue-chip five-star athlete, and I had no, not, not have any idea how to deal with it, so... She helped me the process and made sure that that she watched over me when I went to high school. Um, but you know, when I look at when I look at my old the the look back on my life, and you know, that's a great question people ask you. Uh, I think Barry Switzer was a great, great uh, not mentor, but I think more of a father figure uh, because. And there was a point in my career in, in college when I decided I want to go home and quit. And who, who knows what would have happened if I would have went that route. But he taught me out of coming back and, you know, going through the adversity, going because it was hard, you know. Uh, and so he taught me into coming back. And and uh, to this day, we're, you know, he's, he's great friends to a lot of players. But I think that that was, uh, was something that was very inspiring. You know, Jimmy Johnson, you know, to me, uh, he saved my football career when I was uh, in Atlanta. Uh, they traded for me when I just I felt like that my football career just couldn't continue on because, you know, back in Atlanta when in the late 80s, it was more of this toxic environment and just really didn't have fun playing uh, the game. And so I got a phone call, and they said that they were going to trade for me. And he says, hey, you know, you want to come help me help us once a Super Bowl? I said, Hell yes, oh, yeah. I'm there. <laughs> oh, that's great. So he he gave me the chance to aspire and and, and come to Dallas and, uh, but it just you know my you know my family my 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 parents you know my dad he was my best friend, um, and when he came to Dallas and uh, unfortunately my my parents divorced but he was able to live three or four years me being a rock star playing for the Cowboys because that was. That was there's that was ridiculously great time <laughs> in my life, and he was able to experience the Super Bowls and everything. And he was a simple dude, you know. He he didn't complain about anything when he should. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a lot of people that really really helped uh, me shape my life. That's incredible. Do you think that the athletes see that this day and age? I mean, football obviously has changed, I'm sure, tremendously since you played. Well, I think it, I think it's this right here. I think it's the phone and social media that's really changed a lot of that because I think the core hasn't changed. I think now as you get into it with the way things have changed and college sports and certainly NFL, it's about your brand. And I think sometimes that that's more out there than what athletes want to – they want to uh, – I guess it's a vulnerability because there's so, neg so much negativity and there's so much – I hate to say it, hate, you know, and so people just, they are, they'll just, there's no filter. So I think that they're deep down that those guys work hard. Um, and, but it's more the brand. It's more like, you know, the, the, the clicks and the likes, which is great. You know, I remember I asked Troy Aikman, I, I did a pod, a, a, a podcast and one of the things I, I, I asked him, I said, look, I said, what would be different now than, than back when you played? Because well, I'd, I'd have about four million more followers, and that's true. That's kind of what the game is, you know. And it's kind of hard to not get caught up in that because it is kind of intoxicating. And 
you know, you all you're thinking about is like the perception of you and trying to get it while you can. And, and I think that's the hardest thing, but I don't think guys like to be criticized as much as they used to be. Uh, I think they're somewhat soft um, because of just the social media. And you can't have it both ways, man. If you're not playing, you're going to get criticized. So you got to be able to, you know, to take that. It's not just people saying great things about you, but uh, when you're great, you know, you're out there beating on your chest. But I think that that's the, you know, it, it's it's a different different generation. But to your point, your question about the work hard and ethic, I mean, you have to have that or you won't last long. It's just too competitive. There's too many people out there want to, wanting to do what you want to do. Well, and, you know, with the social media and technology this day and age, it's intoxicating, but it's also toxic. Uh, you know, I always tell my kids, hey, it's don't believe everything you read. Um, but you do. You have to have a thick skin and you have to just have the mental toughness. I think more so now than ever before. Yeah. And I think that that's the reason what some of the mental health of our kid, young people is that they want to be liked. They want to they want to look good. You know, you see all these, you know, celebrities, the influencers and everything. And it's like, I want to be that person. And it's unfortunately, that's kind of what this. It's very hypnotic, and and I I get it because I think everyone does, uh, but I think that they're kind of measuring themselves on that and not who they are. And and it's it's not a true indication of what no. goes on behind the scenes. And I have that conversation with them daily. And I mean, even with our clients, we have to tell them, number one, you know, if you, I, I what I tell my kids is, if you don't want your teachers, the principal, the president of the school, your grandparents, <laughs> to read it and you don't think that it would be great if they read it, then don't post it. A great point. Don't say it. Don't post it. And, you know, the unfortunate thing now with all of these cameras is it's you're, you know, guilty by association. Yeah. And you may not have done something wrong, but because of the picture, because you're in the background, I mean, we hear all of the time of these scholarships getting yanked from these athletes. Yeah, that's great advice that you just gave because, yeah, I think that the perception and perspective of what a person is is – kind of when you open up their Instagram page or, I mean, obviously they want that to be seen to the world. So, uh, yeah, you have to be very uh, careful of what you put out there because if you want to go out and get a job and your employer's out there reading your social media, I mean, we all, you know, fell into that category. But, uh, you know, certainly young people, I think it's very, it's, it's more difficult for them because of that because it is just so enticing. It's like, let me post that picture. Let me do this. And it's like, okay, well, let me think about it before I push that button. I mean, we've all been there. We've all done that. <laughs> we have. All right. So you you also have a podcast. Yeah, I do. So tell us a little bit about your podcast. Well, okay. I started um, two years ago, and it's kind of like, you know, during the COVID, I, you know, it seems so far long ago, but, uh, but I think everyone was starting to do a podcast. And so- I decided I was going to have my own my own podcast, and you can pull it up on YouTube TV. It's a Tony Casilla show. So, you know, I wanted to do something like, it, you know, not just talking about someone's what their career is, like whether it's an athlete, whatever their field is, whether it's uh, you know someone's a first responder, uh, whatever their field may. I wanted to like get behind the scenes and talk to them, like, well, you know, what? L- let's make this a live show. Uh, ask them embarrassing questions. Uh, you know, the advice you would give to your 21 year old self. I have a hard time remembering. Oh, back wait, wait. What was your advice? I want to know what Wait's would your saying. advice be? This is, hey, <laughs> or to I'll, your 15 year old self. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, but I, I think that's why just have fun and, and, and just talk to people, have a conversation, nothing to, you know, broadcasting where it's just, it's just laid back and let's pull up a chair have a cold beer, whatever it may be, and let's relax and have a good time. Um, but I, it's a great question because I always like the most embarrassing moment. You know, when you, you know, I, I think the best question is you ask people that you may or may they may or may not have the best, uh, uh, I, I guess, experience in finding love. Is like, hey, how about what advice did you give to people that are looking for love? And they're like, hell, I can't even find love. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want my advice. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a great question to kind of get the reaction, you know. Uh, so it's kind of, it's based on that. And, 
And I'm going to start it back in, in September during the football season because, you know, that's kind of the, the time where people are all gung-ho and they, they're excited about it. And, you know, I, that's my, you know, that's my, my background. And, you know, I tell you, the, the, the most interesting thing that, that someone ever told me that I ever heard was Brett Favre. He said, yeah, when you first get out of football, you just want to move on and, and try something different. And there's not really any of these set skills that you're taught in business because you're such an athlete. But he said, hey, he says, you know, I tried to, you know, I tried to, to run from football that made me who I am. But then I came back to it and I said, why would I want to deny that? That's who I, my DNA was whatever you are. So that's kind of like, I was like, that sounds like great advice because when you get out of the game, it's like, okay, what I, what am I need to do now? I mean, you know, I need something that's going to really kind of fulfill that excitement and just that desire that you had in the sports. And that's hard to find. Um, but anyway, to, to get back to, you know, the, the, the podcast, it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. You know, I, I do it and I have episodes. You can go, it's Tony Casillas show on YouTube TV and it's a, it's great. It's kind of like what you guys do here. You implement what you're doing and, and you're talking to people because uh, you get it's fun. It's exactly. conversational. I like that. It is conversational. Okay, so I do have to ask, what would you, what advice would you give to your 21 year old self? Um, to not be uptight. That's not to be anxious, uh, because that's kind of the the person I am, and and really just relax and and. and and it's hard. It's hard to to live by those words, uh, and I, I. The most important thing is that I wish I wish I would have been become bilingual, and you know wasn't you know I wish I would have held on to that. But uh, certainly to give your advice to not be so anxious and want to make things happen so fast, uh, just let the life process just take its place. Of course, that that's great advice that are in our fifties and sixties. I mean, that people just don't do that. They're so uptight. They're so glued to their phones and the TV and the media, and and I mean, it's just it's crazy. So people just need to relax. But but these kids also. I mean, my biggest advice to the kids is, I mean, have fun. Yeah. Right. Just have fun. Don't take yourself too seriously. Well, you're gonna fail too. I think that that's the thing too. Is that. I, I I don't know. I, I'm just going by my experience with my kids. You know, then twins being 24, my oldest son being 30, is that the younger kids, especially, they don't like to fail. And I think that that's what builds you. Right. That okay. builds you. That that molds you into something where look, that's what you know. That's unrealistic. You're going to fail. You're not going to get every job you interview. There's always rejection. That's right. You know, that's the you know. That's the best thing that you can go through is is being rejected, and it seems to me it's like I don't I don't want to go there. I don't want to feel that. I was like, you got to feel that. You learn more from your failures than your successes. No, you do. You learn more from your failures than your successes. And and I don't remember who I went to listen to. Uh, oh my goodness, I don't remember who it was, but they said, you know, you gotta you gotta challenge yourself. You know, we all have our comfort zone. But do you want to live your life only in that little narrow comfort zone? And he said, you know, they asked, how did he achieve his success? And he says, because you always step out of your comfort zone and your comfort zone gets a little wider. And so that's what I tell my kids. Just don't be so comfortable. I mean, step out. You're going to fail. It's going to be OK. You know, it's not the end of the world. And before you know it, you know, you can do anything you want. Yeah, I say it gets temporary, not permanent. There you go. It is. So if you can just get through that aspect, I, I think that that's, man, it just builds it. It builds that, it builds that uh, that base. It builds that inner self, because you know, regardless, if you get rejected, okay, I'm gonna be ready the next time, and the next time, and next time. I just think that that's uh, something that people gotta understand is you're not gonna nail it the first time. You know, he he learned about me was. If he tells me I can't do something, oh, <laughs> yeah, wait, watch. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> you just better watch. Well, hold on, hold on. I want to back up. So so what led to your retirement? I know you were in the NFL for 12 years. Okay. And so kind of kind of walk us through like, briefly what how that decision, I'm sure it was a hard decision, or maybe it was an easy decision. I was tired of getting the crap beat out of me, you know, in, in pads. But, I mean, what? tell us about that. I'm curious. Well, I decided it was uh, time for me to retire when 
my wife's at the game and you could see the end zone perspective uh, of the line of scrimmage. And I was a defensive tackle, played down with the, you know, down in the trenches. Right, of course. So I'm in front, the, the guy that's in front of me, uh, the guard, um, I'm lined up against him and he's about 6'5", 340. Then the guy on his side, the tackle, is about 6'6", 340, and she couldn't see me. <laughs> and I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, my gosh, if, 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 yeah, I, I'm going to be able to walk off the field. Right. And I think there's something that kind of clicks in your brain when you're, when you're, you know, it's a young man's athlete, excuse me, it's a young man's sport, unless you're Tom Brady and you're a quarterback, and that's totally different. But as my position, you know that you lose a half a step. I think this, as soon as you need that, you have to start thinking about it, then you're like, I'm done. So I got to the point that where I've, I said, I think 12 years is a good year to retire. Uh, 13, I'm a little superstitious. <laughs> uh, and I just felt like a, a 12 year career was, was long enough for me. I got out as much as I could. And so I think it was more the physical aspect of it. And, you know, as you, the residual things that you go through when you're an at and when you're a football player, especially head trauma, you know, the, the orthopedic, all that stuff. I mean, that's inevitable. That's going to happen. But I think I got to the point where I just had to think about it, and I lost that half a step. Yep. Okay. All right. And so then what would you do? So you're in your early 30s, I guess? So I'm 34, and so I decided when I wanted to be an entrepreneur, I wanted to, you know, like everyone else, mm -hmm. I had aspirations. I, yeah, I, look, I wanted to be – I wanted to take – I wanted my identity to be a business person. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go out. I got into a couple of oil and gas business. And I got into a couple of different businesses. And it just didn't have the, if you're looking for something that's going to give you the passion that you did, especially in this, the game of football, you're going to set yourself up for failure. Uh, and that's not going to happen. So I just felt like that I needed to you know, go out there and then do different things. You know, financially, some of them weren't the best, didn't hit which happens, that's life. Uh, but over the course of my life, I just came back to you know, my identity as a professional football player. So uh, I got into uh, media, broadcasting. Uh, I was very fortunate. When you win, you play on Super Bowl teams. Unfortunately, the Cowboys hadn't won and oh. hate to say this, <laughs> three decades, you know. Kids don't even know, but they didn't realize the Cowboys and what won a Super Bowl, then you're like, okay, well, I still have that identity. So uh, I was able to get into, uh, you know, to uh, broadcasting, uh, public speaking, promotional work, the brand ambassador, uh, which really kind of carried me over to what I'm doing now. And, and I, I'm more like, a, you know, retirement, still working, you know. But, uh, I mean, I had two kids or three kids I had to put through for college, so you know how that goes. So uh, – but uh, that's kind of where I am now. I'm just trying to make things as, as, uh, as I would say, stress-free as possible, but there's not really such thing as that. But so I'm in, a, I'm in a lane where I feel good about myself and still exploring things. Uh, but I got a question for you guys because I know what you guys do here. And, you know, I, I talk about, you know, protecting, you know, finances and as you get older to set up a will and to – to what were your money for your family, protect your family, be able to sleep at night because there's going to be a day when I'm not here. I, I, tell me a little about what you do for, for, for clients or for someone like me that would come in and ask for your advice. Right. Okay. You know, so we do, we handle the estate planning side of things. And I tell, you know, whether you think you have nothing or whether you know you have a lot, everybody needs estate planning. And it's just the responsible thing to do. Um, you know, people ask what motivates me? To, to take that step because you don't want to think of your own mortality, right. no matter how young, old you are. Um, and I tell people, you know, how do you want to be remembered? Do you, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people would come up to me to say, you know, I lost my spouse at a very young age um, in a car accident and they left me with two young children and they would always tell me everything's taken care of. You'll never have to worry about anything only to find out when that day happens, nothing was done. And when they call me first with the grief and, you know, the sadness and just the loving memory of their loved one, 30 days, 60 days later, when they call me again, it's just pure anger. 
And it's, you know, how could they do that to me? How could they leave me that way? So I tell people that should be your motivation. But yeah, to protect, to protect your children. I mean, you protected your children your entire life. You protect your wife. And I'm sure you do anything and everything for them um, if you ever saw them in harm's way. But it also goes towards, you know, estate planning. Financially, you have to protect them. And financially, you have to protect yourself. So whether it's wills, whether it's trusts, you know, there's so many different vehicles out there that can accomplish that. You know, for us, we take the approach of one size does not fit all. You, we, we truly tailor make all of our estate plans to meet your goals and, and objectives and your assets. And, you know, I tell people, do you want to pay good old Uncle Sam up to 40 percent of what you work so hard for? Uh, most people would say absolutely not. You know, they, they may have other choice words to use, yeah. but, but you know, the, the resounding answer is no. And so it's just making sure you've got all of your ducks in a row and, and just everything protected for your family. Um, and I'm sure, you know, we've dealt with some professional athletes when they were younger. And it's, I can't even imagine if you had the experience of all of the, um, you know, exploitation I mean, I'm sure once the money started coming in, people were coming out of the woodwork wanting to take advantage of you. And it, it, you know, for what we do for a living and for as long as we've done it, we see it. And it's like, oh, these young kids that overnight, they're multimillionaires. And, and it's just make sure that you are protected. And I think it's a great thing for parents to give to their kids, you know, we tell parents, when your child turns 18, I mean, I have a daughter that's almost there. They need their documents. They need to make sure that they're protected because at the age of 18, they're still young, but they're an adult. They get to make their own decisions. And I'm sure there's a lot of questions that that people don't know the answers to until they come in here. Yes. And I think that's the big, I think that's probably the big fear when you don't know the, the answer to the question. That's right. That's exactly right. It's the not knowing. And, you know, we, we sell it. Lori's, of course, the guru on estate planning and, and wills and trusts. And, you know, it's all about asset protection at the same time. Um, like she talked about some of these young athletes that are coming into money. You know, we have to protect them from themselves because they don't know what they're doing. They don't ask the right questions. They don't know where they should be putting their money, um, you know, to make it grow in a way that it's protected. Because you're right. People are going to make mistakes. They're going to make dumb decisions. And how do I protect that? Um, and there's ways to do that. There's vehicles to do that. Uh, you know, passing the wealth on to your younger kids before they're adults, uh, as well as passing on the wealth to your kids as they're adults. Um, and it's just, it's protecting the, what you've built. It's protecting the career you've done all those years um, and doing it in such a way that it fits exactly what you're wanting to do. As Lori mentioned, you want to tailor make each estate plan to the, to, to what the, person's, you know, end goal is and what the results they want to accomplish. And, you know, we have our tax reasons to do things. And, you know, regardless of political affiliation, November, I mean, there's a lot riding on November as an estate planner. I didn't know um, that. And I estate tax. <laughs> I write. <laughs> uh, it's like, okay, you know, we went, we're going from this thir over $13 million exemption amount to $5 million in, you know, a year and a half. And that's going to affect so many people. Um, but I also tell, you know, you've worked hard to accumulate your wealth. And, you know, the last thing a lot of my clients want to do is, yeah, they want to leave it to their kids, but they don't want to leave it to their kids and their kids' spouses. Yeah, that's just uh, great. And it's yeah. just really making sure that everything is protected. Well, I will say this. You got you made a good point about as an athlete getting all this money. It's like you're hitting to hit the lottery. Mm -hmm. And then when you hit the lottery, everybody else around you wants to hit the lottery. Oh, yeah. And so the protection of what you worked hard for and now, as much money as their athletes are making, there's no there's no reason why if you find if you work with someone like yourself, your company, your your firm, there's no reason why you should have that issue 20 years down from down the road. I try. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. It is. It's just it's an important, responsible thing to do. We tell people if you don't have a will, that's your estate plan. But whew, you know the the state of Texas takes control, and you know federal government gets a huge chunk of change. That's why people need to come see you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. We always ask our guests, how do you raise the bar? What are your words of wisdom? Well, here's, I, I'm going to use the, the, the terminology of the football, but, or any, anything that it can apply to, uh, you got a game plan. 
execution, focus, and I think those three things, when you when you're able to uh, put those in place, I think you have to have uh, that to kind of create what you you know kind of like organize and and categorize it. And I always felt like that if you have a game plan uh, and you go into it, you gotta you gotta execute it. You gotta have the the focus and you gotta have your goals. I mean that's the the four things to try to live by and. Because everything is not going to go accordingly in, in a game. I mean, we watch the you watch anything in the sports or anything. It, so I just kind of structure that and you know just uh, just keep grinding. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, raising the bar, um, and it's been it's been a great pleasure. Man, I love it's been a pleasure being. It's been a lot of fun, and you guys got a some some office. Thank you. This is a, a pretty we have cool fun. office. Yeah, we absolutely. have fun. We'll come back anytime. Thanks for having me. Thanks to our sponsor, the Ashmore Law Firm. We specialize in probate, estate planning, family law, guardianship, personal injury, and civil litigation. You can find us at ashmorelaw.com. Or by calling us at 214-559-7202. Again, that's ashmorelaw.com. Or calling 214-559-7202.